what key questions do you think patients should ask about their proposed treatment plan to make sure they're getting the most personalized approach for their disease? That's a great question. So first and foremost, you know, when you get an initial diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer, it can be, you know, nearly debilitating mentally um, at first. Um, so it's a little bit hard to be an advocate for yourself, but it is so important eventually to become an advocate for yourself. Um, and um, the first thing that I would say is it's very important that um you have had a biopsy of a metastatic site. So if something shows up on a scan that looks abnormal, maybe a liver lesion or a lung lesion, it's, it's very important that that area is biopsied and checked again for estrogen, progesterone, and HER2. Mm. And the reason for that is um, there's a phenomenon called subtype switching. So a patient can, maybe her early stage breast cancer was estrogen receptor positive you know, there's a 15 to 20% chance that her metastatic disease could be estrogen negative. And it's, it's critical that we know what the, really what the estrogen and the HER2 are so that we can treat them with the, the initial uh, best treatments. Right. So that's number one. I think it's very important to have a biopsy of your metastatic site to repeat that estrogen and HER2. Um, next, um, Pretty important to have had germline, um, at least germline BRCA testing. Uh, and the reason for that is um, we, we now have drugs, the PARP inhibitors that I talked about before that specifically benefit patients that have a BRCA mutation. Um, and then um, the next would be, um, you know, is there a role for next generation sequencing, which is the somatic uh, gene testing of the patient's tumor? Um, I would say, you know, practice patterns differ. Um, for HER2 positive breast cancer, it's probably not important to have that up front because we have a very, you know, it's, it's critical that we know that you're HER2 positive so that we can give you those best HER2 targeted therapies in the first few lines. Um, but we're really not going to use that genomic sequencing um, information for really the first couple of years in metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, for hormone receptor positive breast cancer, I do think it's pretty important to know what your genomic testing is, uh, your next generation sequencing is up front. Um, if you have an ESR1 mutation, then we know that you're resistant to certain types of endocrine therapy. Uh, and we would, we would not give you them. Uh, if you have a PI3 kinase mutation, then we would give you that. If you qualified otherwise, we would give you that um, drug that targeted the PI3 kinase mutation probably in the second line. So um, next generation sequencing is pretty important either in first or second line um, in hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Triple negative breast cancer, the most important thing up front is to um, know what your PDL1 status is. So, and it's very important that if you're PDL1 positive, you get immunotherapy with your first treatment because we know that immunotherapy, if you get it in later lines of treatment, does not work as well if you get it as if you get it in the first line. So it, it's always really tough for patients to wait a couple of weeks to get started on treatment. But as long as your disease is not growing so rapidly that your physician is concerned, which is on the rare end, um, it's good to get all your ducks in a row, get all of the information that you need so that you can be started on the best treatment. Mm -hmm. Dr. Simmons, why should patients feel like they should speak up and, and, um, and that they have a voice? Patients should feel like they should speak up and have a voice because this is their life. This is this is your life. This is your treatment. This is, nobody is going to advocate you for you as well as yourself. Um, if you're lucky, you'll find a physician that, you know, is, is an advocate and, and many of us are, but nobody will advocate for you as well as you will advocate for yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's reason number one. Um, and reason, reason number two would be, you know, we're all humans. Um, your doctors are humans. Um, 
some patients, especially uh, some physicians, especially physicians in the um, community may not only treat breast cancer, they may treat every, every single type of cancer. And it's very mm-hmm. hard to stay, you know, specifically on top of all of the new um, drugs and yeah. <coughs> new options coming out um, in every tumor type. It's, it's virtually impossible. Um, so I, I think, I just think it's important to be an advocate, never be afraid to ask a question. Um, you know, most physicians should not feel threatened by that. Um, you know, we, we like a patient to be engaged. Um, so, so never worry or be fearful about, about that. Mm-hmm.